Corinthians chapter 2. But I want you to keep in mind that Jesus says when they asked him, and I'm not skipping a bunch of scriptures, you can go in there. He's only telling them the conditions of things that would happen between verse number 1 and verse 29. We'd be here all night. Uh, if I went there, verse 13 says, but he, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. See, that's not in American gospel anymore. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to believe that because it's just not, we don't preach it. We preach a quick faith to get your car, you, you get your hair, you know, get your honey, get your money. Uh, he that endureth unto the end. We don't, we don't teach it. We teach if, if, it's too, if it's too hard to stop sinning, do it anyway because God understands. We, we don't teach that anymore. He says, uh, uh, verse 12, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We wonder why folk act all funny, funny front. You're supposed to love you in the church, and you got to find another church in six months. And uh, you got to find another city in six months because iniquity. That means hidden sin. When there's hidden sin in your life, you have to act stink. Because if anybody get close to you, they're going to smell you. They're going to know exactly that just some ain't right. And if they don't have love in their heart, they can't tolerate you saying you are a Christian and you got a flaw in your life. So you hold on to your iniquity. You got your secret faults, your secret things, your secret ideologies or philosophies or whatever. And because, of, uh, because I'm in verse 12, because iniquity shall bind a love of many shall wax cold. So you live in a world isolated, uh, 8 billion nearly people, and you can't tell nobody uh, how you really feel. You really ain't got a whole lot of friends. I mean, you may have one, maybe, you know, but you can't tell everybody just how you feel, how you're thinking, where you're struggling. If you, if you was uh, suicidal, uh, you got to be careful. You can't come and announce that at a church and say everybody love Jesus. Man, they'll have you all on Facebook, folks be looking at you sideways. You can't say you got lust in your heart, you know. All, if you're a woman, all the women will be grabbing their husbands, grabbing him after service, getting him, hustling him into the car. You can't, you know, you can't, you just can't say stuff. The love, uh, uh, iniquity and love of many would wax cold. They know they ain't right, and they know what they would do if they was in your shoes. So you walk around isolated, and if you do get in sin and you know you're not supposed to be there, you hope nobody finds out and you stay there. And the trick is to keep you there until Jesus comes. That's just the trick. Because really, you're tired of your habit. You're tired of your addiction. You're tired of, of if you're depressed and, and looking for a cliff to jump off of, but you don't know who to tell. Who are you going to tell? You don't even know if you can tell the preacher. He may get up and tell everybody. You don't know. We got brother here. He's going to jump off a cliff and leave his wife. And, and he, got a, he got a concubine. He's been seeing her for like five years. And we're going to pray for him today. <laughs> you be like, I'm not going to tell that fool my problem. You don't know if you can trust him. You don't even trust the people in the church, people outside of the church. You just don't know. You know, you don't know if you can go out of town and tell, tell your friend, come over and feed your dog. You know, he might run off with your, with your woman. You don't know. You don't know. I mean, a whole lot of stuff. You hope you know. You should know. You know. You don't know. Why, woman, you don't want nobody in your kitchen while you're going, what? That she came over my kitchen. What's she doing in my kitchen? Well, she goes to the church. She sings in the choir. She, well, I don't see. I don't care about her singing the choir. Well, why would you? Because you don't believe that people are true or honest. Amen. It's just, it's, it's just, it's just that way. You know, it's corrupt. The whole system is corrupt. So, the Bible says there will be a falling away. But let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Quickly, Stephen. Say amen. Hang on with me. And I'm going to tell you why we're in trouble. And why we can't get a prayer meeting together. Because it's hard, the hardest thing in the world to get a prayer meeting together. In the church, it's hard. You have a prayer meeting. A real prayer meeting where folk is, like this young lady says, I got a heart for sinners. You know, most folk hear that and like said, oh, here we go, one of them. Oh, yeah, she going to be, her and the pastor probably get along well. He always hollering about, I got a heart for sinners. You know, I ain't got no heart yet. I've been here all this time. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, 
<laughs> you know, with, you know, but that's what people they oh God, some here's somebody come in, Lord, he got a heart for sinners. Lord Jesus, here we go. He don't need no encouragement right there. <laughs> we we here for the party in the choir. And he goes, because he'll him and her'll be praying up in here. He come shama kuba. We ready to go home. It'd be eight thirty. You know good and well that's how it is. Somebody, the Lord's telling me, let's not go. Let's lay here for another hour. You be like rolling your eyes at her. We don't have a heart for prayer. You know why we don't have a heart for prayer? Because we think we got it made in the shade. The whole country. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. I'm going to read it real fast. It says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord. Three things he's going to say. We begging you to get this by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, that, that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, 2 Thessalonians was written after 1 Thessalonians. I'm sure you would agree with me. He wrote 1 Thessalonians first. He wrote 1 Thessalonians to tell the Thessalonians that y'all don't have to worry about the fact that the rapture has not occurred. First Thessalonians chapter 4 is read in almost every, every funeral. He said, you don't have to worry because they were worrying about, well, what happens? Our loved one have gone on. Did we miss the rapture? Is it over? Oh, my God. Paul says, no. Uh-uh. You didn't miss it. Okay. But then he writes Second Thessalonians uh, to, to, to confirm that. We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Gathering together unto him is the rapture. It is the rapture that you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter. I don't care who tells you what, for that day or from us, for that, day, for that, that the, oh, excuse me, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, what we need to do, Oh, you close me off now. I feel it. feel it. Is study what the day of Christ is. Most of us just took for face value. I know I did. That the day of Christ is the Lord's coming. He just split the sky. And suddenly in the, in the trumpet sound and the shofar and the angel of Christ and the voice of the Lord. And, and okay. But what is the day of Christ? It's surprising how many of us go to church and we don't know things that we should know because we spend most of our Christian experience feeling, feeling our way through. He's going to help me out of this. He's going to help me out of this. I'm going through that. He's going to help me out of this. And we became feeling Christians and not Christians that had understanding what the will of the Lord is, what, what the word is saying. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not speaking for you, but a lot of where I came from and what I know after years of preaching People come to church because they want to feel good. It's been a rough week. I'm so glad to get to church. Girl, you sang that song this morning. Pastor, you preach, and we appreciate all that. But this is not just supposed to be a place called soul food. It's supposed to be a place where we get revelation, inspiration too, but revelation, which means that the Spirit is teaching us through anointed vessels, revelation, not just keep reinforcing tradition. Amen quiet in here. But look, he says, let no man, verse 3, deceive you. And I know where we go from here. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let the apostle deceive you. The prophet deceive you. Don't let people who are good with the scriptures deceive you. Don't let doctrines of men deceive you. That that day shall not come. What day? The gathering together unto him. The gathering together unto him. Don't be deceived. That day shall not come except there be a falling away first. We ain't got a problem with the falling away first. We ain't got a problem with saying people are falling away. Where we have a problem is, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Because from the very first time you heard the rapture, you heard God going to get us out of here before the Antichrist come because he don't want us to be a part of that. Now, I don't want to deal with the dude myself like I want to just run up and just wave my cape in the wind and tell him, I, you know, I ain't scared of you. It ain't like that. But the word says, let no man deceive you by any means. That day shall not come. 
except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God or this worship, as he is God seated in the temple and showing himself that he is God. And being a student of this, having been taught it, having been degreed with it, I have to start thinking and praying for myself when I ask God certain things. Because we go down to verse 6, and you know how that, that what would hold it, that he might be revealed in this time, his time, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that, shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So we were taught that that's the Holy Spirit and the reason that the Antichrist cannot be revealed is because the church is in the land, because the Holy Spirit's in the land. But that scripture when you really study it and you compare it with other scriptures, is not what the Word of God is saying right there. He's simply knowing, letting us know that the mystery of iniquity is already working in Paul's day. Only he who now let it will let, and that's the Lord, until he be taken out of the way. The he be taken out of the way be the man of sin. Once he come on, he going to let him till he take him out of the way. But we were taught, that the Holy Spirit, he, oh, the Holy Spirit is one holding him back, you know, like he was uh, 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 somebody at the bridge, you know, holding the, holding the bridge up so the water didn't come through. Uh, the Holy Spirit. But that's not what that says. And I'm telling you, that's what I've been taught. And I, I taught, but I don't believe that. I don't believe that. And I'm struggling with believing that verses 3 is not what, what the word says it is. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling way first. I ain't got a problem with that. I can look at empty pews on any Sunday or Wednesday and ain't got a problem with that, and you ain't either. But here's where it gets rough when he says, and that man of sin be revealed because we've been taught in America, and this is the only place in the world where they're teaching it, in the Western world, not just America, but in the Western world, where God love us so much, all them people over there, ISIS cutting their head off because they was Christians from Libya. They say they be Christians. They got to hide from the Islamic nation. We say we be Christians. We can ride with these big old crosses around our neck where you can't hardly hold your neck up, and ain't nobody going to bother us, see, because we've been taught since in your lifetime. And I'll tell you where it came in, that God don't want us. We're Americans, so I mean, we're at the top of the heap. This is the best country in the land. We might be good at some stuff, but the Bible wasn't written just to Americans. It was actually written for the people of God. And it is uh, more about what's going on in the Middle East around Jerusalem than is what's going on in Oklahoma City. Amen. I mean, people are the same kind of everywhere. But it's a covenant book about Israel, not about Spencer, not about Dell City, not about Oklahoma City, and not about Blanchard. Amen. It's, it was, it's about those people. So when he says the man of sin be revealed, it's, they started preaching that we're going to be out of here before he comes because seven years tribulation. Now, I ain't got, wouldn't have a problem with it, but the problem is a lot of us repeated it and don't know where to find the scriptures, don't know if it's true, don't know if, if, if it's sound, don't know the other scriptures that counteract it, or if it's not so bad that we don't know, is that we haven't been doing any research since we first learned. We just take it for granted that it's so. Maybe because we don't understand the danger of the doctrine of pre-tribulation. And you're talking to a person who preached it, I preached it in my church, I preach it in, in, in meetings, and I'm just here to be as honest as I know how to be. I'm having an issue with just telling you that you will not have to endure some tribulation. The problem is we don't know the difference between tribulation and wrath because we haven't taken the time to study. God has not appointed us to wrath. But you can't tell me he ain't appointed us to tribulation because I went through that yesterday and the day before. 
And I go through that constantly. It may not be on the scale where they gonna cut my head off, but there's times when I feel like I'm up to here. I'm frustrated. If I wasn't a Christian, I do like everybody else. I just go back out there in darkness. I ain't don't want to walk right. Don't you, you, do you hear what I'm saying? To talk about me, I'd be like anybody else. Get up in your face. I may get whooped, but I say exactly what I feel. You understand what I'm saying? So tribulation, some of you, my flesh like your flesh wants to rise up. That's tribulation. Tribulation is when you are, uh, are going through a tough time and, and, and you got to act like a Christian. Your family is being attacked by the enemy. And sometimes you want to grab one of your kids or, or somebody in the family and say, why don't you just act right like a Christian? That's tribulation. But you got to, you got to act like Jesus. Tribulation could be on the job, man. They're talking, oh, this, I take me too long. So you can't tell me that in all my living, I ain't been through tribulation. Just hadn't been through the great tribulation. Because tribulation worked patient, working patient. And I know I'm a lot patient than I was than yesterday. Y'all should have seen me yesterday before you met me. I'm, I know I'm a lot more patient. You may say he ain't got no patience. Nah, you should have seen me yesterday before you met me. I know how to bite my tongue. I know how to hold my peace. I ain't saying like I ain't going to ever flip, but I know up to a certain level, praise the Lord, and tribulation. But see, the problem with American churches is the reason why we can't get our, uh, uh, we can't live holy. We're, we don't say much is because we don't believe that we're going to ever see any hard time. That's why it rocked us when we found out we, we had to stock up on toilet paper. We knew that was, Lord, this must be the tribulation. You got to get toilet paper like this. And you got, come on, you was in the store shopping. You ain't never ran out in the middle of the night because somebody told you there was some toilet paper over there. You ain't, you know you didn't get that serious about no toilet paper back in the day. But you were like, Lord, I can't, oh, I can't see it. I can't see it. I can't see it. Lord, we without toilet paper. Lord Jesus. Y'all call each other. I know we can get some toilet paper. What's up? Man, come on now. Y'all was, y'all were loving one another in the Lord about some toilet paper. Saints all over the country. Folk were traveling to other parts of the country. See, it, folks, before they put them on lockdown, had trunks full of toilet paper. Y'all, I mean, y'all rather have toilet paper than food. <laughs> Come on, it was tribulation. And then when you start seeing there ain't what no food in the grocery store, you start thinking, oh my God, what's going on? What's going on? You about to wig out, man. You about to whole lot of people about to wig out. If they hadn't sent them stimuli checks to some some folk, man, they'd have had a fit, man. It was tribulation, just that little bit, tribulation. Your loved one dying in the hospital. Come on now, and you can't go see your loved one. They died alone. Oh, Lord, you telling me it ain't tribulation? You get sick, and all the folk came. I've been sick in the hospital, and the room was full of people. These folk came and saw me, and they said, they, somebody left and said, man, I thought y'all said he was sick. No, all the saints loving on me, the joy of the Lord with my strength, man. I just felt like I could go home now. But can you imagine being up there wheezing? You got kids, your my wife, your husband, you, you love them, grandkids, and somebody say, you, your mom, you can't come see them. You dying alone, that's tribulation. That happened all of a sudden. Good people, holy people. People love God, dying by themselves like they was in Katrina, man, laying on the bridge. That's tribulation. It ain't the great tribulation, but it's tribulation. So you can't tell me God hadn't appointed us to deal with tribulation. He says, be thou faithful until death, and I'll give you a crown. Come on, not till church is over, until death. Come on. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And here's where the saints and the enemy has robbed us and why we, we don't want to preach the word. And we say, man, we got to save the souls. Hurry up and get them. It's like, why? God love us. He ain't going to heal, you know. You know, he don't. He love us. He died, so if we breaking them, it's all right. He love us. That's American doctrine. He, he know. He know. I can't help it. All these. You know. You. You, you know. He judging, but just he know. He know. I, yeah, that's my brother. 
That's my child. That's my youngest child. That's my oldest child. And they break them, but oh, God, love me. It's okay. I mean, we just go to sleep, man. We, we, we don't have that. Now, you say, why don't we have it? Because we have been brainwashed to believe that we're okay. Because God is not going to have a heaven without Americans. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Come on, stay with me. Don't go to sleep. I'll buy you ice cream if you stay with me. Ice cream. Just, I'm going to do this quick, but just don't go to sleep on me now. Well, go on to sleep. Shoot, you're going to miss out on the rapture anyway. <laughs> go on to sleep. I ain't begging. Go on to sleep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not begging you. Go to sleep. Ephesians. Uh, <laughs> Second Thessalonians chapter two. Yeah. Please, you gotta preach. Please don't listen to my little sermonette. Listen to please go on to sleep. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan. Second Thessalonians two and nine. Who? Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So well, we believe that all these people, they receive not the love of the truth so they can be saved, but God going to come get us and lead the rest of them who think just like us. Got the same kind of stuff going on in our life. Christians, we go to church, got the same mess going on in our life, but he going to get us because we made it to the house. We did that, we did that 11 o'clock thing. He going to get, he, we going, man. It don't matter we doing all that same stuff they doing, but he going to take us. Because ideally, if you just start going to church, you start going to church. And then they go to church, they get offended by something, and they go home, and they don't go back to church for, for the rest of their life. But they didn't receive a love for the truth. See, when you don't receive a love for the truth, you believe a lie and be damned. You'll believe anything. See, because it feels good not to have to suffer. First Thessalonians 4 and 13, I ain't going to go there. You know himself, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead of Christ shall rise. Amen. So I'm not going there, but let's go to Revelation chapter 11. I'm trying to get through some places real quick here because I know. So I'm asking you to act like you don't know about the rapture. When you, when you die, and people, I don't want to think about that. Well, well, good Lord, Jesus, this is the best time in the world to think about it. If you don't want to think about it, then quit telling me to wash my hands because the COVID's in the land. What's the point? Why are you buying all that spray if you don't want to think about dying? Got me confused. <laughs> Come to church and we want to talk about what happens and, and how to deal. I don't want that. That depresses me. What the, why are you buying all that pine saw? You thinking about it. You running scared thinking about it. But if I can help you to understand, first of all, that you got power in the name of Jesus. Somebody said, what if you get it? I ain't going to die with it. I done had the cold. I done had pneumonia. Didn't die with that. They got us all jacked up. If you get it, you're going to die. No weapon formed against me. Oh, Lord, let me go there. My God. If you don't believe the truth and say the truth, don't mean that it'll come. Come, No plague should come nigh my dwelling. If it come, my God, you're going to stand there. Quit looking for symptoms. Everybody bring you. Cake and candy uh, if it comes. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be honest with you. You can get sick and then won't folk pay attention to you because you need people pay attention to you. But you better quit playing. Better get sick. You spring up on your own because if you go to the hospital by yourself and they ain't let nobody in, you better wish you to listen to a message of faith and you be laying on that bed with the respirator in and can't hardly talk saying the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. You better not be trying to just go to sleep and wheeze. <laughs> hope, hope my folk coming up here. You better be saying in the name of Jesus, Satan, you can't have me. You better wish you to went to Bible class. Come on, somebody. This is real. That's why the devil keeping folk out the, the out hospital so you can go on and die. You better have your own faith to stand on. They ain't going to let you go see your children. Right? Let you see your children. No, you got to go home. Come on, let's look here. Revelation 11, 15. Y'all still here? Y'all quiet. Y'all must be Methodists. Presbyterians. Revelation eleven fifteen, And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever. And then the four 
uh, and 20 elders which sat up on the uh, set before God on the seats fell upon their faces. Now, let me say this here so I can save some time. All of the book of Revelation is not about the wrath of God. That's where they went wrong, children of God. That's where we went wrong. Revelation, as soon as we start reading things in Revelation, oh, that's the wrath of God, oh, that wrath of God. That's not true. When they talk about the four horsemen riding, that ain't the wrath of God. The wrath of God doesn't start until right there after where I just read. Now God's going to show up, show up, and show out. The rest of it is the prelude. It's what men do to men. To, to say that all of Revelation is the wrath of God is to say the Lord is the one shooting all them people in Chicago and Atlanta. It's not the wrath of God. It says the Lord is the one raping all the kids that got raped this week and killing all the babies. That's, it ain't the wrath of God. That's what men do. He's just pro prophesying the revelation, the apocalypse, the unveiling. Let me show you what's going to happen. And that's all he's doing. Then there's a specific time when the, rep, when the great tribulation starts. That's where the issue gets cloudy. But our problem is we took it. It sounds good. Seven sounds better than three and a half. Okay. I lost you, but that's okay. Matthew 24 and 31. I'm going to reel you in real quick. The angels go to gather all of God's people from one end of heaven to the other. But what we've been taught is that that's the Jews. That's not what the word says. Jesus is telling them what shall happen immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, I want you to stay with me because I am not saying that the church is called to wrath. I am saying that we need to check and see if maybe something happens before we go. And I just read to you. And I believe that part of what we're going to see and what's going to surprise the whole world and why so many are going to be lost, multitudes in the Valley of Decision, many people are going to be lost. I'm going to tell you why. Because they're not at Bible class or studying these things and have a love for the truth. So when the man of sin is revealed, they are already behind the eight ball. It says immediately after the tribulation of those days shall. The tribulation of those days, meaning the difficult days, the, the horsemen riding, famine, pestilence. We're in tribulation now. No, not the great tribulation, but the world has seen tribulation. Is this the seven years? No, it's not. But we're in the, the, the part where God is showing us we're so close to the, the seven years that it's just the Lord letting us see. I'll tell you when the tribulation will start. It'll start as soon as the, a man of sin makes a seven-year treaty with Israel. But most people don't know that. You know that, and then some of us that know it don't know it, don't care, because we're not even studying the news or the care. Uh, no, we're still trying to see what's happening here locally. Ain't nothing wrong with locally, but you need to pay attention to what's happening in the Middle East, because that's God's clock right there, not what's going on in your garden. So if the man of sin would pop out right now and decide that we're going to sign a treaty with Israel so Iran and Hamas and all of them don't go in and do all of that, most people in the world right now wouldn't even know. They'd be talking, what about them cowboys? <laughs> that, what that does right there is that starts the, uh, the clock ticking. That's why the Bible can say when they say peace, peace and safety, sudden destruction is going to come. Yeah, peace and safety because they're not thinking. They'll be marrying, giving in marriage. They'll be eating. They'll be drinking because they don't know. 